When I first saw the trailer for Forspoken a year and a half ago at the time of this review, I was amazed at the story and setting and the gameplay as it looked pretty incredible and I'm always for a new game from the creative minds of Square Enix. After spending some time with the demo they released in December 2022 and playing 100% through, I was left not entirely interested in the game as it felt like it was a mishmash of different ideas that do not work and when I say different ideas, I'm saying that this game had an identity crisis as it didn't feel like it knew what it wanted to be. In many ways, it felt like it was trying to be infamous, and in other ways, it felt like it was trying to be prototype, but with its own unique flair. So, like I said, I was left not that interested in the game. But after some time of the demo being released, it was updated, correcting a lot of the criticism that it was given. And now here we are at the final retail release of the game. In this review, I plan to cover if Forspoken is worth playing despite the massive negative reception that the game has gotten, and if you should spend your time and money on the game. In Forspoken, players take on the role of Frey Holland, a New Yorker with an orphan background. Suddenly, she is transported to the mystical world of Athia, where the land is under the tyrannical rule of a group of sorcerers known as the Tantas. Once beloved leaders, they are now feared for their immense power due to the toxic miasma known as the Break, which corrupts humans and mutates animals into dangerous beasts, devastating the land. As Athia struggles with his polluted air, its ruler, Tanta Prov, makes harsh judgments on his citizens. Meanwhile, back in New York, Frey discovers a paranormal halo that leads her to an apartment where she finds a golden bracelet on a workbench. Upon touching the bracelet, she is mysteriously transported to Athia against her will through a portal that the bracelet had just opened. Upon arriving in Athia, Frey is immediately confronted by the cuff that she stole, which reveals itself to be an apparition. Together they are confronted by a dragon that is causing destruction in a medieval-like valley, and after evading the dragon for a brief moment, the cuff teaches Frey the various abilities she now possesses while carrying it. They are then attacked by a mutated bear-like creature, which they fend off using the Cuff's close-range magic attacks, and then the Cuff explains the dire situation of Athia that it's facing, with the miasma spreading rapidly throughout the world, but not affecting Frey, who comes from New York. The opening moments of the game give players insight into Frey's capabilities, and after a few more story events such as an arrest, jailbreak, and change of attire, players are free to start exploring. Each encounter will detail how your arcane attacks impact the deformed demon-like creatures, highlighting their vulnerabilities and delivering a damaging score. A letter grade for each group encounter is given depending on how players execute combination chains along with style and flair. This will in turn award players with EXP after each battle, allowing them to level up Frey and unlock more abilities in their skill tree using mana awarded after each level up. The game's protagonist, Frey, is for me a bit of a relatable character. Now this is interesting considering how much I hated her in the demo, but yeah, just bear with me. That demo was a terrible representation of not only her, but the entire game as a whole. The voice acting and character animations are also well done, making Frey a believable and engaging protagonist. The game's open world sandbox gameplay is also a high point, with a deep and satisfying traversal system that makes exploring the game's lush and varied environments a joy. Forspoken offers players a beautiful open world to explore with a variety of landscapes and biomes. Exploration is made more fun by the ability to flow and parkour around the world and players are rewarded with stat boosts, crafting materials, and lore entries. Combat in Forspoken is also enjoyable as players can use magic to take down enemies and upgrade their abilities over time. Now, to give an idea of what the gameplay is like, if you've ever played Infamous or if you've played Prototype, then you pretty much have an idea of what this plays like. It's primarily a third person shooter with some close range melee abilities thrown in for additional flavor. The game starts with rock and plant based magic, but progresses to fire, water, and energy based magic. The combat is visually spectacular and players must juggle different types of magic effectively to succeed. However, the controls can feel cumbersome at first and they do take some time to get used to them. In terms of combat, Forspoken offers a unique blend of action platforming and RPG elements. Players can perform combination chain and parkour through attacks and execute special abilities in a fashionable and visually impressive manner. 
The combat is fast paced and fluid and players will need to rely on both their parkour skills and combat abilities to defeat enemies. Players can chain together combos and use special abilities to take down enemies in stylish and satisfying ways. The game also features a dynamic difficulty system that adjusts to the player's performance, making sure that the battles are always challenging but not impossible. Forspoken is a game that has its ups and downs, but its strength is in its exploration and combat which make it worth playing. The open world of Athia is beautiful and fun to explore, and the battle system is fast paced and satisfying. While the narrative segments of the game could use some improvement, the exploration and combat more than make up for it. And again, the thing that sets us apart from other games in the genre is this unique mix of action platforming and RPG elements. Performance wise, Forspoken on PlayStation 5 runs well no matter if you play it in quality or performance modes. There's even an option to run it at 120Hz given that your TV or monitor can support that, although it will be capped at 1080p and at a lower level quality than the standard performance or quality modes. On PC, the game runs fine if you have a twin series RTX card and run it at 1080p. However, higher settings will require a minimum of a 30 series RTX card, of which even Square Enix has published a recommended settings guide. On Steam Deck, the game can run with the default settings, although I personally prefer to run it with the graphics preset being at low across the board and performance mode selected. This will make the game look rough as if you smeared Vaseline all over it, but it will allow you to run the game at a higher refresh rate. I got an average of about an hour and an hour and a half of battery life with my settings on deck. And there have been some updates that have been pushed out with the Proton Experimental that allow this game to run better, as well as official updates for the PC version that allow it to run better on deck. Now I do want to mention one other thing. Graphically, yes, this game is absolutely beautiful. The world of Athia is absolutely breathtaking. The character models, on the other hand, they're kind of so-so. While Frey looks great and a lot of the main characters look great as well, the biggest thing you're going to run into is a lot of the characters that are not the central focus will look rather bland and generic. And the other issue that I've run into is when it comes to when the characters talk, their mouth movements with the, I guess the Luminous engine, make them look really weird. So it's very, you know, uncanny. In many ways, it breaks the immersion that the game is trying to give you. And wrapping everything up, the story of Forspoken is, it's good. It's just not told as perfectly as it could, which is interesting because this is written by a team of experienced writers, including Amy Henning, if you're familiar with the Uncharted series, which is what she penned, and features relatable dialogue and characters. The voice acting is also praised, in my opinion, with Elia Balenska and Jonathan Cake as the lead roles. Despite some narrative structure issues, the overall presentation and unique mix of action platforming and sandbox open world gameplay make for spoken a highly recommended game for fantasy RPG enthusiasts. Overall, Forspoken is a game that is full of potential, but ultimately in many ways falls short in delivering a cohesive and satisfying experience. It's a game that's definitely worth playing for its unique traversal gameplay, and it isn't anywhere near as bad as a lot of these outlets and YouTubers are trying to make you think that it is. But it's also not going to be game of the year. So as long as you temper your expectations and go into the game with you know, the open mind of having fun with it, then yeah, you're going to enjoy it for spoken.